Hello there, Atheist Jr. here, your friend and humble narrator. And I'm back with another Whackin' Atheist stream. It's been a while. Um, so I'm going to go as long as I can today. I did have to go to the dentist this morning and get a root canal. So my jaw's a little bit like swollen and sore. But that was like literally 12 hours ago. So I think I should be fine. Um, but I I suffered through it to bring you you people content my my viewers my supporters uh, my cult followers <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding um, but no I I um, I'm happy to do it and I've been working really hard this week on a collaboration with another channel that's called Skeptic. I don't know if you guys have seen that channel, but he's done some collaborations with Emma Thorne. So, yeah, I mean, I basically, I had to record about 54 video clips in the past two days. So that was uh, an experience because I'm really used to doing uh, live streaming stuff like this, which is it's easier for me because it's just off the cuff. And the reason that I kind of prefer it is with um, pre-recorded stuff. I have to memorize lines and write scripts and do a million takes. And it's, I don't know, I turn into a perfectionist and I'm like, oh, I, I have to record that a thousand times. Uh, which was more unpleasant, the root canal or debating Kent? Well, I didn't have uh, nitrous oxide when I was debating Kent, so that was definitely worse. Uh, honestly, debating Kent was legitimately exhausting, although I kind of want to do it again. Watching that Ian Chen debate really makes me made me feel like I kind of wish that I could debate Kent Hovind again. It's it's like this urge that I I, I fight because I know it's not worth it, and I have so many of my friends who would tell me like, oh, don't do it. What is what is the best approach to debate Kent Hovind? The best approach to debate Kent is to, to have a couple questions planned, questions that are fairly simple, and literally just keep asking those same questions because he will dodge the question when you ask it. Just ask it again. Just keep asking it. This is, I don't know why people don't do this. Just keep asking him and make Kent defend his own beliefs. Don't let Kent rope you into a uh, putting evolution on trial, which is literally one of the, the titles of one of their recent debates, because Kent does not want to defend his own beliefs. All he wants to do is have a debate where he has no pressure put on him to defend any of his own beliefs or explain anything he believes. He would much rather just try and poke holes in evolution because he thinks he's really good at it. And that allows him to just simply monologue his PowerPoint slides. Don't let him do that. You got to get him off of his off of his slides, get him out of his comfort zone and just ask him questions about what he believes. Ask him to justify it. And the number one most important thing. If you're going to debate Kent Hovind, make him defend his beliefs. And when he immediately says, oh, I'm not asking for my theory to be taught at taxpayer expense in the public schools. Tell him, yes, you are, because you had a DVD that you sold called Public School Presentation um, by Dwayne Gish that you sold. You had uh, a a video that you made that was called Public School Presentation. You had a, a DVD by a book by Dwayne Gish called Teaching Creation Science in the Public Schools that you sold. And you tried to directly influence uh, the education system in Arkansas to block schools from being able to spend taxpayer money on books that contained um, anything that said uh, homologous structures are evidence for evolution, embryology is evidence for evolution, fossils are evidence for evolution, literally. You could, he tried to get a bill passed that would block Arkansas schools from using taxpayer money to buy textbooks that said fossils are evidence for evolution. So, 
Yeah, and don't let him, uh, don't let his babysitter SFT come in and rescue him. Okay, so let's get started. So um, this is a whacking of Telltale, um, who is Telltale Atheist or Owen Morgan, who's a really nice guy. I actually dropped into his Twitch stream earlier today, and I was chatting with him a little bit, and he sent some people over to my stream, which was nice. Um, he's a really cool guy, and I got to meet him at Faithless Forum, or I don't know if we actually met, but he was one of the organizers, and it was a great event, so he's a really cool guy. Let's go back to the slides here. We are in oh, oh, our Genesis Baptist Church, which we built just for the occasion, for a video studio and to have church services in here. Genesis, oh, I'll get in the center there. Okay, brother. Genesis Baptist. We're going to do tonight Whack an Atheist. It is fun, it's fast, it's easy to learn, and you get addicted. And it's a joke. Relax, calm down. No atheists are hurt or harmed in the making of this video, all right? Even small children can learn how dumb evolution is and can whack them back down with real truth, like your son in fifth, five. I just think that's sad, the idea of teaching small children that evolution is stupid. It's not stupid. It's, it's the key, it's the keystone it is the foundation of how that child's ancestry came to be. It's incredibly important to that child's understanding of biology, life science, and the human body to teach them about science. S small children can learn that evolution is stupid. That does not mean that they should. They should learn the truth. They should learn science. Five to six years old. Oh, and whoever... Uh, whoever cut Kent's hair, uh, I'd get my money back if I were you. Dinosaur did not live millions of years ago. Whack him down. So many atheists, so little time. We only do this whacking to try to wake him up before it's too late. Wake up. Wake up. You've been taught something dumb. There's a God that you must face one day. Wake up. I like what Tom and Jerry. Wake up, Jerry. Wake up. This is dumb. What you're doing is dumb, dumb, dumb. Okay. The Bible says, Psalm of David, the fool has said in his heart, there's no God. And if you don't believe in God, you are a fool, according to the Bible and according to Kent Hovind. And according to common sense, has to be a God. The fool has said in his heart, there's no God. Corrupt are they and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. Now That's simply not true. There are plenty of atheists who have done great things for charities and um, women's rights, women's health care. Um, helping out the poor, helping out uh, charities in Africa like Seth Andrews did. I think there are plenty of atheists that have done good things. This is just a silly thing to say. I mean, this is an absolute statement. Yes, I, I did. Uh, the, fi the fire. Uh, we're going to get to that. We do this whack an atheist. Where's my mallet? Here we go. We do this purely for your own good. We're trying to push you out of the way of the speeding car. What happened to my... I had a new... SpongeBob here somewhere. Oh, right. Oh, man. People are always sending me the coolest things. SpongeBob with a hat on of some kind. What kind of hat? Oh, taxi driver. I think SpongeBob has some type of growth or tumor on his head. Trying to wake him up. Evolution's dumb. Stop, stop, stop. It's not true. Okay. Okay. Wake up. This is for your own good. Just imagine humans and whales have a common ancestor. Just imagine. No, they don't. It's not science. Okay, tonight is the 18th of May. I have a debate this uh, Friday night and two more next week. So you atheists, bring it on. We're going to take on all of you at the same time, no problem. Boot camp coming up July 1st through the 4th. If you want to come down for that, training against the evolution theory. And we have Melvin Meister, uh, Matt Powell, Damien, uh, and Jimmy, uh, Dr. Jimmy Steger in the Mobile, and myself speaking different uh, sessions on boot camp. Then let's see, July 1st through the 4th is our boot camp and fireworks that night. So if Matt Powell is still around, we should see him at the dumb boot camp presentation. So come on down, free. Everything's free. Cabin's free. As long as they're open, call soon if you want to do that. Okay, spontaneous combustion or spontaneous ignition, it's called, is the occurrence of fire without the application of an external heat source. Due to chemical, biological, or physical processes, combustible materials self-heat. To a temperature high enough to ig for ignition. That happened to us. What was it? Two nights ago, we bought got six bales of hay, 
on the trailer. We're driving over here, uh, Chris was, and one of them caught fire. It was wet internally and set the whole trailer on fire. So we're going to put some videos about the, uh, the, I got video footage of that, brother. You can put that up sometime and it's a, uh, it burned our trailer. So laszlo has got it all torn apart and ground down and we're going to have to repaint it and one new tire. And um, what a mess. It was about $2,000 damage to the trailer and the hay, but a new trailer is 3,000. So it's borderline, <laughs> it's borderline stuff. Damage to the hay. I don't think the hay is salvageable. And I just think this is funny. So Kent, if you haven't seen the video, someone from DAL reached out to me on my Twitter DMs and was like, hey, I have a video of a fire that started at Dinosaur Adventureland and Kent Hoven said not to call the fire department. And I was like, send it to me. I think that's hilarious. Just the fact that there are actually there's actually people at Dinosaur Adventureland who see these shenanigans going on and know that my channel has a wide enough audience that if they send the video to me, they know I'll put it up and the people will actually see it. I just think that that's funny that she thought of me. I won't say who it was because I don't want the person to get in trouble. But so the Bay of the Bay of Hale, did I say that right? Hey, hey, the Bale of Hay. I am I am dyslexic. The Bale of Hay was wet internally and that caused it to spontaneously combust? Was it wet with gasoline? I mean, it spontaneously combusted. No, somebody threw their cigarette on the hay and it caught fire. Why does he have to lie about this? And furthermore, why, does, why couldn't Kent call the fire department? That's what I want to know. The fire department is not going to like, you're not going to be in trouble if there's a fire and they come out there, you know, all they care about is people's safety. Like they're not like the cops. I mean, unless stuff was just badly um, not up to code at DAL and they didn't want the fire department to see, I can't think of any reason why you wouldn't call the fire department. But yeah, so Kent shows the same slide on his episode today that me and Big Bad Mama were watching in the live chat. I was in the live chat and he mentioned me. Uh, he was like, oh, Atheist Jr. Uh, uh, showed a, a video uh, of uh, making fun of me because uh, we had we had a fire. I'm like, no. Um, how do you think I got the video, Kent? The people in the video are making fun of you. That's the people who are at DAL. And maybe he was talking about the comment section, but, you know, I can't help it if somebody sends me the video. And he said that I was desperate. Like, no, it, it was just funny. I thought it was funny. Okay, sorry. Moving on. It happens like that. Spontaneous combustion, a wet bale of hay. Who'd have thunk it? Okay, let's see. DAL needs another farmer or two. We have a greenhouse. I'm going to get two more soon. Come see our greenhouse. Help us get everything set up for uh, a part of the tour to teach about God's amazing plants. Get our video series, which is here somewhere. Uh, is it over here? I don't see it in that stack. It doesn't matter. Anyway, get our video series uh, and get, a hundred, get 10 sets for 300 bucks, 30 bucks a piece. Give them to all your friends. Get my book, What on Earth is About to Happen for Heaven's Sake. If you want Hay bales can ignite themselves. As the hay begins to decompose, it generates heat and can get very hot internally. A big stack of newspaper will do the same. Okay, fair enough. Okay, I believe that. Want to know what's going on? We're gonna have a special on this. Let's. So, um, what I would like to know is why are they letting their hay sit around long enough to where it just starts rotting when they have so many animals on the compound? who really need food and should be eating, just let them eat it. Why are they letting it go to waste? And I'll buy, I'll buy his explanation, but the way that it, the fire was handled did not seem very good. There was a ton of people around there and there was nobody who just came out with a fire extinguisher. See, the video series, normally a hundred bucks on, whoa, what on earth is about to happen? A hundred dollars? 
for the Woe series, a hundred dollars. Okay, dude. Yeah, but you're not in this for the money, right? Liar. Liar. Kelly said, Brahovan, let's have a special. We got to get this message out. 60 bucks until we run out. Uh, no, this week only. This week only, 60 bucks for the video series. What on earth is about to happen for heaven's sake? It's coming like a freight train, folks. Ooh -wee. We have 115 concurrent viewers, and maybe Big Bad Mama can vouch for me, but we were just watching Ken Hovind's live stream, and he had 70 viewers. Dude has 200,000 subs almost, and I'm kicking his ass in engagement. So thank you to the people watching the live stream. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are awesome. I love my audience. I love my viewers, and I love my supporters. You guys are awesome. Be ready. Okay. We do this whacking atheist to try to warn you, you're going to face God one day, and we're here, your, we're your friend. You don't believe that, I know, but we are your friend. We're trying to help you, okay? See, Ezekiel, the Lord said to Ezekiel, son of man, I made thee a watchman. Give the people warning, here are the watchmen. When I say to the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning. So if God said, if I tell the people they're going to die, and you don't warn them, the blood's on your hand. But if you warn them, if you warn the wicked, and he turned not, now the blood's on his hands. You delivered your soul. I'm just trying to deliver my soul. I got to give you the warning. You're headed for trouble. Jesus said, if you offend these little ones that believe in me, you'd be better off with a millstone, hanged about your neck and drowned in the depth of the sea. Oh, man. It's been a long day. And you folks that are teaching evolution are in trouble when you stand before God. In trouble. You're offending little children. Okay. Fossils. What's the best evidence for evolution? I Googled that today. From uc.edu, what is that? University of Canada, UC? I forgot, the University of California, I forgot to check. Doesn't matter. They say fossils are the best evidence. Stop and think, guys, stop and think. No fossil counts as evidence for evolution. Yes, it does. You cannot prove any fossil had any children. Yes, you can. But first of all, why do we need to? We don't have to prove that. A fossil doesn't have to be a direct parent to count as an ancestor to a modern living animal organism or human. Doesn't matter. But we found fossils where the fossil the fossilized bird is on top of a clutch of eggs. We found fossilized eggs. And obviously we find animals of one species and we will find fossils near them or in the same area or strata that are much smaller that are children it may not be the the children of that specific fossil but again it doesn't matter you couldn't prove that in any court of law you don't have to prove that fossils had children in a court of law that's not how science is done that's not how paleontologists study fossils fossil doc fossils document the existence of now extinct past species most of them some extinct some not okay that are related to present day species. Okay. Direct observation is another proof for evolution. This is baloney. Nobody ever sees any animal produce offspring other than its kind. Nobody. We don't have to. And you refuse to define what the word kind means. So that's irrelevant. It doesn't matter if we don't see that because it's irrelevant. And we do see speciation happen. So if the word, if the word kind is analogous to species, then it's irrelevant because we do see fossils, uh, we do see animals speciate. Where are the transitional fossils? Archaeopteryx, Australopithecus afarensis, Lucy, is, is perfectly transitional between modern humans and chimps. Uh, Tiktaalik is perfectly transitional between the Sarcopterygian four limbed lobe-finned fish and modern land-dwelling four-legged uh, mammals. We have a perfect transition between reptiles to mammals. There are tons of examples in the fossil record of the transition from reptile to mammal. There are transitions between cetaceans and their ancestors, like Pachycetus, Amblyocetus. And we have a super chat from two pounds from Jared Leach. It says, fuck Kent Hoven. I agree. 
you see no transitional fossils, well, go to a museum for once in your life. He ever sees that. We can directly observe small scale evolution in organisms with short life cycles like pesticide resistant insects. Well, now hold it. This is from uc.edu. Pesticide resistant insects. Here's what happens. Pesticide resistance is not evidence for evolution, okay? The uh, d okay, Darwin, <clears throat> Darwin also said that if his theory was true, then we should find a dinosaur or bird, uh, we should find a bird species that has unfused wing fingers. Two years later, two years later, they found the first Archaeopteryx fossil, proving his point. The original group had some individuals that were already resistant to the pesticide. And how do you think they got that resistance, Kent? Through mutations. When are you starting this point in the life cycle of these insects to say, oh, they already were resistant? What do you mean? They were already resistant. How do you think those insects got that resistance? Through beneficial mutations. They spray something on I welcome the trolls, bro. On them. Most of them die, except the ones that have this resistance. And now the, pop, the resistant population is increasing in the percentage wise. They're still not in charge. You spray them again, you might kill all but the resistant ones. They already had the resistance to the spray, whatever it is you're spraying on them. After spraying, most were killed except the naturally resistant ones. Technically, every fossil is transitional. Then later generations, you find out, oh, wow, now there's a whole bunch of resistance and you spray more stuff. Second spray further reduces the original and the resistant ones now dominate the population. That nothing changed. The population changed and evolution is a change in uh, allele frequencies. And if the allele is having a, a resistance to a pesticide through a mu mutation, then the percentage of the insects that had that allele increased until they were the dominant member of the population. So there's an increase in the frequency of insects with that allele. That's evolution by definition. You change the ratio in the population. You didn't change the bug to anything. It was already resistant. Don't have to. You just selected those to survive. The, nothing new was ever added. That's not evolution. Yeah, it is. I'm sorry, but your definition here is a straw man definition. What, you, what you're doing is you're explaining something that is a clear example of evolution, and then you're saying, no, uh, no, uh, but, but actually, um, the, the definition of evolution has to also do this thing and this thing and this other thing. You can't tack on all this other stuff and say, oh, only then is evolution uh, uh, true, because Evolution never said that an insect will transform into something else. This is not Pokemon. It's selection, artificial selection in this. Oh, friend, mom, gotta catch them all. I'll teach you and you'll teach me. Oh, man, gotta catch them all. Oh, man. Okay. How does resistance occur? This is all through the internet. They spray stuff on them. Pesticide resistance. The population of a single kind of pest is made up of biotypes of that organism. In other words, different kinds of the same organism. I agree. The biotype is the same organism, but has genetic differences. Dogs come in many variations. Are we ever going to mention telltale at all or no? Variations such as lab, husky, poodle, bulldog, but all are dogs. I agree. Pesticide resistance is the natural ability of a biotype of an organism to survive exposure to a pesticide. I agree. It didn't change a thing. That's not evidence for evolution. That's evidence the original creator was pretty smart and put in that creature the ability to produce a variety of offspring so some will always survive. Did you no. What you're doing is you're looking after the fact at another example of something that's clearly fitting the definition of evolution that the textbook says, and then you're retroactively giving an ad hoc explanation that says, well, no, the designer did that. But you've already come to the conclusion that a Christian God designed all these animals. 
And so what you're doing is you're just forcing that square peg into a round hole and making all of the examples fit your explanation. I mean, it might be convincing to the people in the room with you, but it's not going to be convincing to me or my viewers. My viewers, except for just a nobody, are far too intelligent for that. You know, General Motors puts a heater and an air conditioner in some of their cars. Heater and air conditioner. Don't they do opposite things? Yeah, because they don't know if it's going to cold climate or warm climate. And I bet if you went to Alaska, you'd find out most of the heaters wear out before the air conditioners. And if you went to Arizona, you find out most of the air conditioners wear out before the heaters. That's just good thinking, planning ahead. You don't know where the car is going to go. Just put them both in there. What's the strongest evidence for evolution? Except in that case, God would know exactly what's going to happen. So your example is flawed. Today, scientists can compare their DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. Similar DNA sequences are the strongest evidence for evolution. Really? Strong? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Longest evidence is DNA. Well, let's see here. A hey. guy named Owen Morgan, he's 32 years old, calls himself the telltale atheist. He has six videos against me. Somebody tell Only six? <laughs> texted me today. Said, did you know he's got videos about you? I said, I don't know who he is or I've never heard of him, but. Except that you've talked about his channel before, Kent. I watched a couple. I just heard of him today. Owen Morgan, 32 years old. He did three videos. Kent Hovind proves a young earth, seven minutes long. Young earth part two, five minutes long. And young earth part three, set nine minutes long. That's one. Then he did some more in his playlist. You can look at that. He's part of the godless heathen. Mm -hmm. We'll see how that works out judgment day. Oh, there's Owen right there. Whose cult is it anyway? Well, Owen, let me explain something to you. I could not play your clip because you have a filthy mouth. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean... You're the one who chose his, his channel to be featured on this show. I mean, you could have picked somebody else. Okay. I couldn't play your clip. You said the Bible facts. Angry gods, Ten Commandments, made of total bull. And I had to black that out. Oh, and you keep something in your mouth frequently that I wouldn't, most people don't put in their hand. Okay. Come on down. We got. Okay. We have a super chat from Rider for Life 724 for $5. Thank you for helping educate me in ways my private younger creationist school didn't. They taught a similar concept as Hoven and never let us question them. Well, I love I love the idea that somebody would find my videos educational. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you for the super chat. I I really appreciate the generosity. It, it means a lot to me. So thank you very much. Got some around in the pasture up north. Okay, you can put that in your mouth down here if you'd like. Okay. There are five types of evidence for evolution. Gross. discussed in this section. Ancient organism remains. That would be fossils. Fossil layers. Similarities among organisms alive today. Oh, that proves they evolved from a common ancestor? Hmm. Similarities in DNA. Similarities in embryos. We cover all that on my video number four. I don't see my seminar part four. Is it here? Yep. Creation seminar. Get the whole series. 50 bucks. Number $50. $50 for DVD. Who has a DVD player? In the chat, type one in the chat if you own a DVD player right now. If I gave, if I sent you a Canhoven DVD, would you be able to play it right now? Type one in the chat if yes, and type two if no. Because I don't know anybody that has a DVD player. Fifty dollars for a DVD set, not even Blu-ray. Could we at least get a uh, uh, 1080p? Blu-ray, DVD, 480p, really standard def, $50, rip off, rip off for videos that are already on YouTube. They're already on YouTube. Number four, lies in the textbooks. A PS4 counts if it can play DVDs. I mean, I, there, I have uh, something that can play DVDs just because I have an external drive, but I can't remember the last time I watched a DVD. That's one every public school kid needs to see. Oh, lies in the textbooks. Get them that. Pay them 50 bucks or 100 bucks to watch it. So DNA does not prove evolution. Even Sir Fred Hoyle, who believed in evolution, 
So the notion that the operating program of a living cell could be arrived at by chance in a primordial soup here on Earth is evidently nonsense of a high order. I agree. Okay, so it seems like a fair number of people uh, have DVD players, but I'd be curious about when was the last time you actually used a DVD player to watch a DVD? Like, I'm going to watch a DVD. <laughs> it just seems quite antiquated with video streaming websites. Hey, Fred, you know better now, don't you? Yeah. Um, oh, Fred Hoyle was not somebody who believed in evolution. That's nonsense. Million lines of code. That's a number bantered about more than ever as software sizes develop overactive pituitaries. Can I get a quick good luck on a major storm about to fly through my area? Awnings and wind damage has already been reported. Well, good good luck. I hope that you stay safe throughout uh, tonight and until the storm passes. So, you know, maybe uh, go hide in the bathtub if you have to. Some cell phones use up to 5 million. Mm-hmm. Vista repu reported reputedly has 50 million. Everett Dirksen from Illinois, where I'm from, once may have said, a billion here, a billion there, pretty soon you're talking real money. Well, a million lines of code here, a million there, pretty soon you're talking about a program that's mind boggling and incomprehensible as our national debt. A million lines of code printed out would be 18,000 pages. That's a stat. Okay, so, it uh, I, I stand corrected about the DVDs, <laughs> but still, I still think $50 is too, too much for that. Six feet tall on typical 20 pound paper. Ironically, the listing weighs in at 180 pounds while the actual operating code is mass free. Did you know the whole code to make you the DNA code weighs nothing, almost nothing. It'll live in a fraction of a gram of silicone. Like DNA, human re uh, the code's human readable description requires tremendously more mass than its actual ins installation. A million lines of code instantiation. It is probably on the order of 20 million instructions or 600 million bits. That's not far off the three billion base pairs in human DNA. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Human DNA has three billion base pairs. Unlike DNA. <clears throat> Okay, we have a super chat from Antoine Landreth for $5. It says, the interactive Batman movie is best on DVD because I can't find it on streaming. Yeah, um, I definitely think that there's an advantage to physical media. Plus, nowadays you have uh, things like the PS4 that can upscale standard def DVDs to high definition. But still, I, I, my, I guess my point was just that uh, Kent Hovind's method of selling DVDs of that contain videos that are already on YouTube just seems quite antiquated to me. That's all. I just think it's funny. Which has redundancies and so-called junk sequences. Every single bit of the code must be perfect. A single error causes greater or lesser failure. The DNA code is mind-boggling. You can study this the rest of your life. We're just now getting able to read it. Certainly we can't make one like that. Um, so when was the human genome sequence? Okay, so the human genome was, was project was completed in April 2003. So they sequenced the entire human genome and uh, what else did he say? <laughs> so if you took all the DNA out of your body, six, that's how many feet long the DNA from one of your cells would be. I have, I have barely heard a mention of Telltale Atheist in this video. If you uncoiled each strand and placed them end to end. Do this for all your DNA. The resulting strand would be 67 billion miles long. The same as about 150,000 round trips to the moon. That's the instructions to make you. The so what? What's your point? 
DNA code is absolutely mind-boggling in its complexity. Let me show you a quick video clip about the DNA code right here. Okay, so this part of the video, uh, I'm slightly, con I'm not conflicted on, but he just shows like a, a full raw dog video of Veritasium. I think he shows the entire thing. And while I find it kind of annoying that Kent just plays the video in its entirety, uh, I, I guess I'm not going to be mad that the people at Dinosaur Adventureland are seeing a video from a channel that actually has some good science. So um, I guess we could play some of it, but he plays like the entire thing. So I, I may skip ahead. We have another super chat from Logan Fisher. It says, uh, UCSC, my alma mater, 2000. Well, what school is that? Uh, Southern California. Any molecular machines. And they are doing this inside your body right now. To understand why, we have to zoom out. Santa Cruz. Every day in an adult human body, 50 to 70 billion of your cells die. Either I, I, I hope I won't get flagged uh, for this, although it, it is a video being shown within a video, within another video. <laughs> They're stressed or damaged or just old. But this is normal. In fact, it's called programmed cell death. But to make up for all these lost cells, right now, billions of your cells are dividing essentially creating new cells. And that process of cell division, also called mitosis, well, it requires an army of tiny molecular machines. So let's take a closer look. DNA is a good place to start, the double helix molecule we always talk about. This is a scientifically accurate depiction of DNA created by Drew Barry at the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute of Medical Research. If you unwind the two strands, you can see that each has a sugar phosphate backbone connected to the sequence of nucleic acid base pairs, known by the letters A, T, G, and C. Now the strands run in opposite directions, which is important when you go to copy DNA. Copying DNA is one of the first steps in cell division. Here, the two strands of DNA are being unwound and separated by the tiny blue molecular machine called helicase. Helicase literally spins as fast as a jet engine. The strand of DNA on the right has its complementary strand assembled continuously, but the other strand is more complicated because it runs in the opposite direction. So it must be looped out with its complementary strand assembled in reverse, section by section. At the end of this process, you have two identical DNA molecules, each one a few centimeters long, but just a couple Citation needed, bro. Mm, God, not real. You just got dunked on by logic and facts, bro. You cannot handle all of all of my logical, rational atheism. Full nanometers wide. So to prevent the DNA from becoming a tangled mess, it is wrapped around proteins called histones, forming a nucleosome. These nucleosomes are bundled together into a fiber known as chromatin, which is further looped and coiled to form a chromosome, one of the largest molecular structures in your body. God did it. You can actually see chromosomes under a microscope in dividing cells. Only then do they take on their characteristic. Okay, uh, I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit. Because he literally watches the entire video. Well, I think we're fearfully and wonderfully made. And watches an entire uninterrupted six minute video of Veritasium talking about DNA that has no mention of God or anything. Great video, you know, great video. You should go watch it if you haven't seen it. You know, just plays the whole raw dog video uninterrupted, doesn't say anything. And then at the end, well, 
I think we're fearfully and wonderfully gay. God did it. And that's it. Like, really? I mean, you can't have a better example of Kent showing scientific evidence that, you know, real scientists actually worked hard to create these scientifically accurate uh, 3D animations of DNA. And he plays that and it's just says, God did it. I mean, way to piggyback on the actual science with your religion. How lame is that? I mean, we're the younger creationists who are producing 3D animations of molecular machines. I would like to know that. Trolls in the audience, answer me that question. If you think all that happened by chance, you need some help. What do you mean by chance? I think your haircut happened by chance. Okay, you really do. I will praise thee. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. So, Owen, why can't you see you are fearfully and wonderfully made? We have 150 live viewers, by the way. My Hawaiian shirt is in the laundry. Uh, how did DNA originate? Well, uh, RNA is the precursor to DNA. I can tell you that much. We know that. But scientists think that individual nucleotides may have formed spontaneously in the chaotic soup that was simmering on the primordial earth, and eventually these nucleotides bonded together to form RNA. So, like I said, RNA is the precursor to DNA. Some RNAs were better at copying themselves than others, so they persisted and became more abundant. Sound familiar? Natural selection at its, at its most fundamental. And then the, the Miller-Urey experiment basically simulated this early Earth environment. And although they didn't find any large complex molecules like DNA or RNA, their experiment showed that the organic building blocks uh, could have formed spontaneously on the early Earth, laying the foundation for more complex molecules later on. So scientists may not know exactly how DNA originated, but we know that God didn't make it. Why would you believe you came from a dot of nothing? I really don't. I what the heck is a dot of nothing? How can a dot of infinite density be a dot of nothing? That's just a non sequitur. It's stupid. Hoffman. We'll debate you any time, Owen. Call 855 Big Dino. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Extension three. I'll talk to you off the record if you'd like. Or uh, you were born about the year we moved to Florida. Uh, my kids are all older than you in their 40s now. Why can't you see? Why can't you pray? What's the relevance of that? I mean, me and him are almost the exact same age. So what? Praise the Lord. You're missing the best part of life. You had some comments on your uh, channel about me. Not good at naming things. Wrote in, uh, where's part one? Uses of vulgarities already. Vulgar language is the effort of a weak mind to express itself forcefully. I agree. Owen? Um, how does a long RNA duplicate itself? Um, hold on. Uh, let me Google it for you. Or you could just Google it yourself. I mean, that's literally what I'm going to do when you ask when you ask me that question. RNA RNA viruses replicate their genomes either by synthesis or reverse transcription, DNA replication and transcription. I do know that scientists can make uh, RNA duplicate itself in the lab and they can create DNA strands too. So in your face. You got a filthy mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. That's why your heart is filthy. I'd, I'd like to fix that. I'd like to introduce you to Jesus Christ. Now, you were apparently raised Jehovah's Witness, and that's enough to turn anybody off, okay? <clears throat> I'm a far cry from a Jehovah's Witness. I believe they're wrong on just about everything. Oh, you're no better than a Jehovah's Witness, Kent. Don't act like your beliefs are any less crazy. And we have a book. I mean, a, a book, yeah, a book you can get. Let's see, why I'm not a Mormon, why I'm... 
Okay, we have a super chat from Kelly or O'Hara for two dollars. I hope that pronounced that right. It says fearfully made describes all of Hoven's vids. That's <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. I'm not a Seventh Day Adventist. Why I'm not a charismatic. Why I'm why I'm not a doctor. Why I'm not a uh, high school teacher. Why I'm a liar. I'm not a Catholic. Uh, why I'm not a New Age global citizen. Why I'm not a Campbellite Church of Christ. Why I'm not a Muslim. Why I'm not allowed to go in within 50 feet of an elementary school. Why I'm not, uh, let's see, more on the Mormons. Why I am a moron. And answers to my Catholic friends. Damien, isn't there one on Jehovah's Witness in this? Answers to the voices in my head. Series? You can order that from a Bible Baptist Bookstore. You can get it from there yourself in Pensacola. If, if we don't have it, get it from them. But uh, Jehovah's Witnesses will drive anybody away, and, and they are. Hoven's Witnesses? Way wrong on everything, just about. So, But you continually use vulgar language as if that makes you sound smarter or something. Yeah, I can't even play your stuff on here. <clears throat> but I'll take you on. A debate anytime. Oh, and you. Oh, this is a good one. I could seriously take all of Atheist Junior's subscribers and have them following me. Okay, uh, well, you make a channel, and we'll see how long it takes you to get 5,200 subscribers. And 39 patrons. I mean, go ahead. If you think it's that easy, if you think that my Atheist viewers would flock over to a channel called Bible Believer. That makes sense. The trolls are out in full force tonight. Ten of your friends, but I get half the time. No interrupting, no cursing or swearing. No interrupting? Swearing. One topic. No interrupting? Get a time. One topic for the whole. Somebody told me I don't let Kent finish a sentence, so I don't Wait. want to interrupt. What do you Kent. think is no interrupting? The best evidence no. <laughs> if you think it's DNA. Give me all the stuff you why you think DNA happened by chance and proves evolution. I'd like to see that. If you think it's fossils, let me know ahead of time. We'll get a whole debate just on any one topic. You choose the topic. Owen, I'd like to see you get converted and use your life for the Lord, okay? Hey, I, I welcome everybody to be in my live chat. I'm just having fun, so no, no hard feelings. There are some similarities in the different creatures. I agree. There are some similarities in the Picasso paintings. Paintings by Picasso. Picasso? Picasso. Picasso have many common themes. He was drunk, I think, in all of them. You can Why? Because he had an abstract style? That doesn't mean that he was drunk. Just because you have no taste and you can't understand the significance of the cubist style doesn't mean he was drunk. Oh, he must have been drunk. And look at a painting and say, oh, that's a Picasso. Yep, I agree. Similarities in paintings do not prove no one made the paintings. They show the paintings had the same artist. The similarities in DNA, the similar. Okay, so if somebody makes an acrylic painting and then I make an acrylic painting, does the fact that they both uh, used acrylic paint mean they had the same artist? No. If I, if I do a painting in the Cubist style, does that mean that it's a Picasso? No. The similarities show the paintings have the same artist? No, this is super easy to disprove. Why do you why do you think that there were fraudulent Da Vinci and Picasso paintings? What a stupid, stupid argument. Terrible argument. Video's almost over, guys. Similarities in animals like radius and ulna in the forearm. Prove the same designer made the code. That's all. So bring it on. Any questions or comments for tonight? Okay, we're gonna we're I'm gonna skip that part. So uh, okay, so we have 166 live viewers. Thank you to all the people in the chat. It's been a lively one tonight. I, I did decide to stream a little bit later than I normally do because I have gotten a lot of comments from people saying, you know, I'm over in this time zone and I never get to see um, your live streams. So. That's why I wanted to um, do it at a little bit of a later time. 
But thank you to all the people in the live chat. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Uh, we just recently passed 5,000 subscribers, which is amazing. Thank you so much. I have a video that should be coming out on Saturday that is my collab with Skeptic. Um, it's easily the biggest, uh, most intense video. Like, it's the hardest I've ever had to work on a video in terms of, like, the content itself. So it should be really good. Um, you know, go follow me on Twitter. And if you'd like to support my channel past just subscribing to it, viewing, commenting, engaging with it, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash atheist junior and consider pledging as little as one dollar per month. So I'm going to play the Patreon outro now and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you. A big thank you to all the people who support me on Patreon. David Street, Paul Kamish, Regios, Dave Dalafior, Pterodactyl Hunter, Jack, Stacy C, IS4321IS, JC Magruder, Iris Arc, Scientia Perceptum, Pumpkin J, Joshua, Alicia L, Constance, Dave Wilkinson, Jason Metcalf, Ryan, Christopher Johnson, Peter Emanuelson, Ian Chen, Professor Flynn, Denny5252, CL, Robert Anthonat, Noah's Hangover, Harold Dalton, Thomas M. Gallipoli, Tapioca Weasel, Patrick Summers, Geo, Cheryl Starner, Luke Stevens, and Lisa Swanson. Thank you guys so much for supporting my channel. If you'd like to support my content past just viewing it, subscribing, liking, and commenting, you can go to patreon.com slash atheistjunior and consider pledging as low as $1 per month. Well, thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, Curtis. Did you just, did you call me ugly? Did you, I will have you know that my mom loves me. I do, I will bring her in, I will bring her in here right now. My mom loves me, okay? Does your mom like you? Does your mom love you? Have you called your mother recently, Curtis? Because you should, okay? You can't go around calling people ugly, okay? That's mean, it's insensitive. And I assume you're talking about me. Were you talking about me? Were you talking about Ken? I don't know. I'm, I'm just fucking around. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> and I hope the guy who um, had a hurricane or whatever hitting his house is okay. Thank you to all the people in the live chat.